What's up, YouTubes? Uh, Nate the Choom here. Welcome, Chooms. Uh, so this is Choomcraft. Uh, pretty much, I'm a newer cyberpunk DM, and I've been getting into the craft new side of YouTube. And so now I decided to actually go through and make some stuff myself for my own game, so I can actually have something in person for once, which will be dope. But yeah, so this is just going to be me making a bunch of stuff, and just kind of like a vlog of that. I'm just like, this is, look at what I made. And if you guys want to make it too, or like you get inspiration from the stuff I do, feel free, take it. Take anything you want from the game, I do not care. But uh, yeah, so this first video is a doozy. <laughs> so I started recording and lo and behold, uh, I messed up the angle completely. So in this first video, you are going to see the back of my head quite a bit. You're going to see my hair. It happens. About halfway through, I uh, you know rewatched all the footage from me initially making the dang dumpsters and noticed that my head was there. So I switched up the angle so it does get better. Stick with me and it will get better. All right, but yeah, so this is my first video, a uh, dumpster fire video on making a dumpster fire for tabletop. So yeah, let me know what you think. Jumping right in here, first marking out the size and shape of my hole. I'm gonna take a nice sharp box cutter and go ahead and start carving out those pieces. You wanna go real thin lines, you don't wanna go heavy, or you'll start damaging the floor. Right, it's better to go like nice shallow cuts. Then, we're going to go ahead and take a piece of this cat box here, cut out one of the sides, and this is going to be a great little extra detail layer to tack onto these sides and be able to give them some like, extra cyberpunk kind of details. So once again, just line these up with an edge, start marking out the size and shape with an awl, and I go ahead, go through, and cut out the pieces. You know, it's pretty straightforward. The chipboard is real easy to work with, real easy to cut. It's dense, it's thick, it's not like the foam. You don't have to be nearly as gentle. So you see, just single cuts, bing, bang, boom, one corner still attached, trim it out. This other one, I just hit it all in the first one, you know. So going through, initially I marked out a design with the awl. I went through, I didn't catch that on recording, but yeah, you just see here, just cutting out the inner piece. The first part I cut out of the middle there, you can see already on the foam on the side. And that's going to be like a little handle for the back, just trying to make it like realistic. And then that piece right there was just extra scrap. And so with these little scraps, these little bits you get from the chipboard, these are great to hang on to for later, you know, other projects and stuff. Just awesome little detail you already put the work into. Right, but yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Figure out some kind of angular, nice looking sci-fi design. And just go ahead and cut it out. You know, I'm keeping different things in mind. Like I want to attach some sides for the dumpster for it to get raised by like you know, the trash truck forklift kind of thing. And then also trying to think of like handles and just like cool stuff to add on. But yeah, real easy to work with, real easy to cut details into. I love this kind of chipboard. It's great for making this stuff. And so on the sides here you'll see I just put a little bit of detail at the top. And that's because I want those, you know bars running across the sides of the dumpster. But yeah, if you see little dots next to one of the foam pieces, that's going to be the bottom. And those are going to be like the little feet it's standing up on. So for attaching this, I go and attach to the paper side because that absorbs into the glue way easier. And you know, make sure I'm getting it thoroughly coated, a little bit of glue all over this on all the little thin bits. And then after it's attached and while it's still warm, you want to work off the extra hot glue. It's just way easier when it's still like pliable and like you can rip it and just not have to care. But yeah, right there you see I got a little string on that one, but made sure that the whole thing on the inside was covered. And then, you know, you can always rip those strings off and stuff later. Just, you know, at first make sure it's attached, it's in the right spot, prioritize. Now for getting the piece glued together, you want to do it like that. You go from attaching the outsides, outside corners, and then just move it inwards. So like you want the extra hot glue to seep into the middle of the box, not towards the outside. And then for the front, once the back three pieces are in there, you see you can't really do that easy, so I just kind of eyeball it, work it, clean it up later. The bottom, real simple little square. You only need hot glue where the pieces are actually going to touch each other, so you don't have to use a crazy, crazy amount. But yeah, you can see there, this is the sides of it. Got this last top piece, which has the foam attached underneath the cardboard. 
I did that so in painting it wouldn't actually like, bow or bend, like warp on me. And you can see I just line it up, mark out where it is, actually using the box as a guide. And then I'm just cutting and ripping and moving all those pieces out of the way so I get a nice flush fit. And this helps once again, you know, Mini standing on top of the dumpster, it lets it be a little stronger. You can really toss this thing around now, not have to worry about that cardboard side. So here I go, I'm adding on the, the sidebars to raise this thing up with, with like a trash truck. Real easy, you know, just aim for the middle. I kind of squared out the inner third with the awl. And then I just went back through was just pushing down on it and making this nice little divot. One thing I found that helped was uh, bringing it to the edge of the table so I could really push down in there. And then just using the awl to kind of rough shape that indent into it. Go back through and square it up with the little edges, you know, and you get a really effective looking little hollow piece of foam. It looks great for that side detail. Like before. Slap some glue on the sides that are actually going to touch it, and then mark it out in place. And you can see I put it way too back at first, but with hot glue you have some time to work it. It's not instantly attached. You know, even super glue you have a little, little bit of time, but with hot glue you get a pretty good window to be able to work it. And then you know, going through here I see the indentations are still a little circular, so I'm like, okay, we got to go through and we got to true those up to clean up my workspace there a bit. So I just take the tip of it, just get it in a good little bit, and I start working it up into the corners. Really trying to get this thing to look square, as opposed to look like it was indented with an awl. And then I go ahead and I slap a little layer of hot glue on the sides. It gives it like that nice welding detail, and it also makes these a lot stronger. And then on to painting. So my little mix right here is my homemade Mod Podge based on other YouTubers. It's just a little white primer good amount of Elmer's glue. I got a touch of water down in the bottom just to melt things together. So, squirt of black paint and a little spray of IPA. Work it all together until you actually see the black come together like there. You want to see that black absorb into everything else before you start using it. You just get all of those mixed up real well. I'm not trying to really be careful. I'm just trying to get the side thoroughly coated. I just want to make sure that we start out with the cardboard side so I can see right away if it's going to start bowing or not. And then uh, painting on the chipboard, you see where I'm hitting it on the graphics side, some of that primer, some of that like Mod Podge isn't going to hold on that great. So you just keep working it, just put a thin layer on there and let it dry and come back. It literally does not matter because you're going to be throwing a few layers of this on there. If at first it doesn't stick, that's fine. You just come back on, throw another one, and then lo and behold, it's gone. Bam, you get that, both of them mod podged. And then I go ahead and start throwing on the color. Initially, I'm just trying to get this nice blue coverage. You can see the second one there is done, the smaller one. This one was the first one I made, and it ended up being way too big. So I figured, you know, I'm gonna be like a mega building, a corporation's giant freaking dumpster. Because this thing on the back side ended up being about as tall as one story on the building that's right next to it. So I was like, yeah, this thing's going to be a problem. But that was the first one I made is the big one. You know, it was kind of like the proof of concept. I wanted to see like good ways to attach stuff before I put in a ton of effort for it. And it came out awesome. You know, I liked both of these dumpsters, really. I don't mind having the extra big one, especially because I turned that one into the dumpster fire. I love the mini one, the one that's in scale so much that I was very reluctant to set that one on fire. So I was glad that I started out with a, an extra big one. It also made it a little easier to get all those fire details and stuff in there later. All right, yeah, so just finish up all the blue paint, get all the base coat on there. You know, I actually turn these guys a couple times when I'm doing this, make sure I get a couple coats. And then I'm on to the dry brush of the gray here. Just some regular gray, thin it out, and brush off, you know, 90, 95% of what's on the brush. And then you see as I work it back and forth, it's only touching that top part. So the under part on the dumpster stays that nice black color. 
And go ahead and hit the edges, make sure it, you know, it kind of gives it that metallic look, kind of like the black paint of the top is coming off. All right, so right here, the main trick is using a hair dryer to get this stuff dry. It's gonna make adding in these layers and just drying them off super quick and easy. You just slap one on, hair dry, slap another one on, hair dry. You'll see it go from wet to matte, and that's how you know you're ready for another layer. You know, it cuts out all the waiting time and it makes it so much easier. And so now I'm mixing in some of that brown and that yellow, trying to get like a nice dirty, rusty, grimy color going on. And so I'll keep working with it right now. It's on like a kind of tan and I darken it up, I lighten it up for different things. And then I go through, you know, adding it almost kind of like a highlight, just coming straight from the top down. And that's because I know that I want to add in some like grimier looking streaks and stuff to go with it too. So I start working that in certain areas, really trying to get, you know, a couple like lines of grime going. And you can see the grime, it ends up looking good. Just a little bit of like dirty tan on that blue, it's just to really make that pop. I'm really starting to define all the different lines of grime and like the rust the direction it's going and how it's falling and all that. And now here you see I start working in the black. And so I just started to work it back and forth. Blow dry it, darken it, darken here, there. So it was around this point when I saw the footage, saw my head in it and was like, if my video is going to be a dumpster fire, why not make it about a dumpster fire? So I set it on fire, like <laughs> straight up. A uh, real quick burn here, got some great results, it only had to be quick, and of course I'm being safe, I got water, I'm outside, I'm wearing a mask, all that jazz. Moving in here, I'm just making the flames, just a dot of hot glue and drag it out, some straight, some wiggly. You just gotta build up layers. It's all about just, you know, tack one on the inside and start tacking ones on the outside with those tendrils leading up, going back and forth, you know, and you can see some of those dots, they were straight, some of them were squiggly, I, I tried to vary it a lot. And so once I get it all white primed, I'm just going through and adding in a thick layer of bright, bright yellow. You'll see me start to work some of that primer in because there's a few spots, especially on the back, that like in the little cracks in between the flames. I just wasn't getting enough primer into it. And once I start to slap the yellow in there, it really starts to make the clear stop reflecting as much white. And I can really like see into all those little cracks, like where exactly it's missing. And so yeah, I'm just getting good even coverage, building up layers, you know, it's real thin at first. And then I go ahead and get thicker, thicker, thicker. I just really want that bright yellow opacity. And that's the thing is, in the end, this thing is mostly going to be yellow. You mostly want this thing to feel like it's bright, it's white, it's putting out light, you know? And then, yeah, you can see on the front, I went through, attached in some of like, just basically the scraps and stuff that I had. And then I took some hot glue on the front and I put some drips down, you know, just literally stick it on and then drag it down, just like you were the flames. And so I go through, you know, just adding in a nice little orange, just a real, real light dry brush, because you don't want a lot of the orange. You really, really don't. You just want a touch of it in there to help blend the reds in that we're going to be bringing in next. So, you know, clean it out, load it up on red, and then once again, dry brush. You get most of that paint off. When you want to drag that thing over, you want to have to really build up that red layer because it's way easier to build up thin layers than it is to take them down. You know, you don't want to make this whole thing red with no yellow by accident and then have a headache of a time trying to get that yellow to cover the red. It's not an easy mistake to fix, stuff with yellow. But yeah, just working it in, really trying to get it on the tips and on like the heart of those flames, really on the bases and the tips, really. I'm not working a lot of the mid areas, I want the oranges and those yellows to really come through on those. But yeah, in the end it doesn't take a lot of red to get the job done. Um, I think after this I went back through again, but that's pretty much it. Alright dudes, so yeah, taking a final look at these, I'm super happy with how they came out. You can see 
with this bad boy. The planes have some nice reds and oranges in there. Got a lot of good colors. I added a little bit of yellow around them to make kind of like object lighting coming from the fire itself. And then just, you know, little hot glue drips coming down. Very easy, very effective. It's literally like making the flames just actually on here. And then those are hit with a glow in the dark green. Just pure glow in the dark green gives it that great ooze. And then obviously you get that light up. But yeah, this is the big one. I ended up going back through and adding in a little mid fire. I really like the way that it all came out. It's sick. And then with the little one, you know, you can see the final paint. It's really nice. It's got that nice little slime blob there at the bottom. A nice ooze, good detail, and like the grind throughout. I'm so happy with how these came out. We'll go ahead and show you a little photo montage for them. And that's it, my guys. So yeah, go ahead, you know, do the stuff. Like, sub, comment, or not. <laughs> you do you. But yeah, I'm stoked. These are just like, oh, so much better than I was expecting. And yeah, super easy, super cheap. Done. Thank you.